Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new, my name is Chris. It is a new month and time for a new purchase or pass video. I like to do these once a month and let me tell you guys, there are going to be a lot of surprises on this video. A lot of passes, a lot of shockers for me and probably shockers for you. In fact, I probably should rename this video unpopular opinions on popular fragrances. Spoiler alert, there is only one for sure purchase and one I'm thinking about. And I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fragrances. So with that, let's get started. Let me get my notes here. So the first one I'm gonna start off with, I know this is going to be a big shocker. First one I'm gonna start off with is Sol de Jetta Mango Kiss. So I'm already skeptical going and this is my second big this is my second decant I'm almost done with this decant I have a solid opinion of this perfume so I'm already skeptical going into it because it's $290 for a 50 ml so let's put that in perspective so I oftentimes get the 100 ml bottles because it's a better deal it's although I might rethink that as my storage situation is getting a little bit dismal so let's put that in perspective so it's $580 for a 100 ml bottle. I don't have anything in my collection that's remotely close to $580 for a 100 ml bottle. It was gonna have to blow me away, and did it blow me away? It did not blow me away. What I wrote down with all my testing is that I got a bitter green mango skin and a dark fougere. I don't even think fougere notes are in here. So I got a bitter green mango skin, dark fougere, and very woody like pine sap. So this is not the type of fruity perfume that I enjoy. When I wear a fruity perfume, and I typically wear my fruity perfumes in the warmer weather, I want them to be fruity and juicy and sweet and maybe clean. I don't want them to be dirty, woody, or oody. That's just my preference. I just like to keep it fresh and juicy and refreshing. So. You're either gonna go one of two ways. If you don't like fruity freshies, you're probably gonna love this. If you're like me and you like your fruit fragrances to be more on the fresh side, the juicy side, you may not love this. And this one was, like I said, this was going to have to blow my socks off at this price and it didn't, so this is a big pass for me. Okay, quick break. The next one um, I thought for sure I was going to love. It's by Imaginary Authors and it is called In Love With Everything. I looked at the notes and thought, this is a no-brainer, I'm gonna love it. So the notes are punch or fruit punch, palm sugar, raspberry, citrus, and sand. And it's like, how could I not love this fragrance? And the problem is, is that I got like a fruit punch potpourri, if there's such a thing. It came off very, potpourri like and it kind of reminded me of like a bitter rhubarb so I don't know if rhubarb just I didn't write rhubarb down it was like a rhubarb potpourri I tried three times to get to the dry down and it just there was something very bitter and that just didn't mesh with my body chemistry yeah I still can't quite figure it out but didn't work for me so I am not it turns out I am not in love with everything <laughs> the next one is Vice Bomb by Simone Andrioli. I have tons of Simone Andrioli. I love the house. A few of the fragrances are my current favorite summertime perfumes and I am a cherry lover, so I thought this was going to be a home run. I have at least 18 solidly cherry-based fragrances, so maybe with that, the bar was set kind of high. So when I got, when I sprayed Vice Bomb, what I got, it smells delicious. So what I get is Lost Cherry with Gentle Fluidity Gold and a little bit of a cherry cough drop. So it does smell very good, but it's way too redundant. I already have Gentle Fluidity Gold. I already have Lost Cherry. So I didn't need another fragrance that smelled almost exactly like what I already own. And this one, does have a little bit of that like cherry cough syrup vibe. I don't hate the cherry cough syrup vibe, but it just wasn't full body worthy for that reason. And also compared to several of my fragrances, particularly like Duqueza or some of my cherry perfumes, the lasting power on this was not very good at all. So this surprisingly was a no. So the next one I've actually had <clears throat> as a sample for over a year 
and I've never talked about it. I have the I have the entire Discovery set, but this next one has gotten the most hype. Oh my God! Thank you for the breeze. This one has gotten the most hype in the community, and it's called Tales from Zanzibar. And this is a guava-based fragrance, and I love guava and perfumes. And I haven't worn this in a long time, so I wrote down my notes. So I do get a delicious guava in the beginning, but pretty quickly after that, it is completely taken over by cassis or cassis and that is the leaf and the buds and the twigs of the black currant plant so it's very very green and leafy and to me i mean i love black currant and i can take cassis in little doses as long as it doesn't overpower the scent but in my opinion it kind of it really competes with the guava for the fragrance i would rather the guava be front and center and the cassis was just way too strong for me. Yeah, too strong, too green, even though I didn't hate it and I didn't dislike it. What else did I write down? Yeah, I didn't need it because I already have some guava-based fragrances that I love. So this one was a no for me. Again, some unpopular opinions on some super popular fragrances. What are we gonna do next? Um, the next one, I will do Gossip Night. This was one of the biggest shockers to me because looking at the notes, I should absolutely love this perfume. So the notes are peach, whipped cream, vanilla, and caramel. I mean, you're speaking of my language. Yeah. However, what I got and what is not listed, and I'm, maybe it's just not listed on Fragrantica, I get a very, very strong patchouli and this is coming from a patchouli lover. I love patchouli. This is a huge blast of dirty patchouli in the opening. And I'm talking like the patchouli shrub, you pull it out of the ground and up comes the roots and the dirt. So it smells like dirty patchouli with the roots and dirt on it. It smells like dirty patchouli, literal dirt in the opening. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why it came off as such on me, but Boy, that, I, I, I scrubbed it off. I rarely have scrubbers. I literally scrubbed it off the first two times I wore it. And then I waited for the dry down on the third time. So, so that really, that dirty patchouli dries down or that dirty patchouli kind of fades in about a half an hour. And then the peach comes out, but the peach isn't like a juicy, bright, syrupy, like you bite into a ripe, peach it it's on the darker side in my opinion and it has that skin so it's like the skin of a peach with a little bit of the pulp and I definitely get vanilla and a caramel sweetness I don't get any whipped cream at all from this so it was enjoyable in the deep dry down but I don't but a no like I don't need a perfume that I really struggle with in the opening I don't want something that smells like literal dirt in the opening so <laughs> I know it's super popular, but it's just, I'm kind of happy. I'm kind of happy when I find fragrances that I don't feel the need to purchase because it's just less, more, it's just money I can save and put towards a love. So the next one we're going to do, oh my goodness, I'm nervous, is Pink Me Up. And I have to say most of my decants, I did a sample swap with a friend over on Instagram who I met on Instagram and we made this list like I'd like to try this, this and this. So we did this big sample swap. So if you're on like Facebook, if you're on any type of fragrance group or club, I highly recommend these sample swaps. It is a fantastic way to try out a fragrance without having to blind buy. And most of these, I will, pro I will list it down below where I found these or where you can get samples. And most of these you can get samples on like Lucky Scent or So Avant Garde. But the next one's Pink Me Up. And honestly, going into it with the bottle alone, I was just so willing to purchase it. That bottle and the pink color and the gold sparkles are just beautiful. And it is a pretty perfume. So this is super pretty. So this is a blackberry based perfume and has like rose champagne. Let's see, what did I write down? Blackberry champagne rose and a splash of iris you definitely get the iris in the beginning and that fades pretty quickly the iris starts pretty strong and then it basically fades to almost nothing and i wrote down that's right i wrote down that reminds me of a perfume that i used to own 
but Yves Saint Laurent, it's Mont Paris Intensement, so the intense. I really enjoyed it. I loved it. I think that one has raspberry in it and maybe blackberry. I never wore it, like never. Enjoyed the perfume, loved it, got rid of it. So it really does smell a lot like that perfume, but seeing that it smells a lot like a perfume that I decluttered because I never wore and it's not a total love. And I found this to be very light wearing on me. I just, I will not be getting pink me up right now, even though I will definitely be enjoying my little decant. So the next one is called Super Moon by Carner Barcelona. And this is a pomegranate based perfume. So it's pomegranate. This is another one with cassis. But in my opinion, the cassis did not completely overtake this perfume. And I wasn't convinced, I wasn't sold on the first wear. It wasn't until the second wear where like the first wear I did, you know, I did a stupid thing. I was like testing like four at a time. So one on each of the back of the hand and one on each arm. And when I wore it kind of just by itself on one arm the second time, like throughout the day, hours into the day, I was getting these wafts and I, I remembered where I sprayed it and it was always going back to super moon. So I thought, wow, this is really good. It's really quiet, but it is a very, it's just a perfume that really appeals to me. So it's fruity but it's not overly sweet, it's not syrupy sweet. And there's a cassis in here, so there's a little fresh greenness, but it doesn't overtake the perfume. So what did I write? It's got gentle musk and amber in the dry down, it's sweet in the dry down, and it's got patchouli in the dry down, but it doesn't overtake the perfume like I felt Gossip Night did, or what I interpreted as patchouli. And this reminds me um, of a perfume that I really, really like that I never purchased because it was had terrible longevity and it was really expensive. It was uh, by Christian Dior Rouge Trafalgar. This is gonna put you in that ballpark, but this has pomegranate as front and center. So this is a, this is a love. This is a purchase. I am going to be getting, and they have nice options. There's a 30 ml bottle and I know a 100 ml bottle and it hasn't been super easy for me to, it's very accessible in Europe. And I almost purchased it on the Carna Barcelona website, but I wanted to add a couple more so that I think my shipping costs could come down. But yeah, Supermoon is a great one and one I plan on purchasing. So quickly in the last two, another one by Griti, and this is called Tutu Blanc. And Blanc means white in French. This to me is like, this should be called Tutu Pink pink tutu. This kind of reminds me of the color like light fuchsia. So not hot pink, but a light, lighter shade of a hot pink. This just smells like a pink perfume to me. There's raspberry in here. There's musk, some fruits. What other fruits? We have grapefruit, green apple, um, vanilla. It's very powdery. It's very fruity. It's very pretty. It's almost frilly. It's that, got that fruit musk combo, but it's not really harsh like Herba Pura. I don't like that fruit musk combo. This one is really light. It's softer, it's tamed down, it's very powdery. And I really, really enjoy this. So this one is the only one that's a maybe. This one is a maybe on me. This might pos this could possibly be a full bottle. I haven't quite decided the only maybe in the bunch but very, very pleasant, very lovely. And I could see this, I could see me wearing this almost all year, basically, for sure. Definitely in spring, summer, and even in the early fall. And the last one I'm gonna go with before my yard gets cut and I have to leave for work is, it's the newest one by Narciso Rodriguez and this is Narciso Rodriguez for her forever. And if you are a returning subscriber to my channel, I have said many, many times that the original Narciso Rodriguez, Narciso Rodriguez for her, the EDT and the EDP are masterpieces, particularly the EDT. I love that perfume and I own both the EDT and the EDP. I think they're beautiful, huge compliment getters. That is like, I can guarantee that it's just something that's very universally appealing. And I find when I wear them, People just love them on me. Now, I think you're kind of in the camp. You're either the cube, you either like the cubes or you like the rectangles. I like the musk and the rectangle. It does tend to be a little bit dirtier, but it's just, I like it. The cubes is a little bit strong and it's way, the musk is way too powdery. 
So I prefer the rectangle, and this is a rectangle, and it's absolutely beautiful. And I've worn it like three or four times. I love it, it just smells, it smells like you took the EDT and the EDP and you combine them, let's say maybe 80% the EDT and 20% the EDP and put them together. And um, I will say the ED, both of the original EDP and the EDT are light wearing. This one does wear longer. So this is a longer lasting version of the two. And if you've always wanted to get one or the other, this would be perfect because it's kind of both of them combined in the long lasting version of the two original, the two OGs. But I will not be purchasing this because like I say, I already own the original EDP and EDT and I'm gonna stick with those. I don't really have room for redundancy in my life or my perfume collection anymore. So that's it, a quick July rundown of my purchases or past, or I should have called it unpopular opinions on popular fragrances. Tell me what you think in the comments below. I know a lot of you are not going to see eye to eye with me on this, but that's a beautiful thing about perfumes. Somebody's treasure is another person's past. And better for me because now I can save my money and purchase something that I really, really love. And I will be on the hunt for Supermoon in the coming weeks. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting me and I will see you on the next one.